I was just recently re-reminded about a uh, fly that there was a guide that came and spoke to Mangrove Coast Fly Fishers a number of years ago that brought a fly along called the Batman that he used in the deep grass uh, in the in the fall time I think in October on the on the moons uh, for fishing up in his area and basically you just drop this thing right on the redfish's head because he's right deep into the grass anyway having been re-reminded about it I thought I'd give it a crack and my initial versions uh, were just a little bit simplified uh, from the actual fly. The one that I'm going to go through today is the little bit more complex version. It's it's not much different. Basically, we're starting. Off, I'm starting off with a uh, Tiemco. Uh, this is a 811s or an 800s. I'm sorry, uh, in size one. I've got olive thread. We're going to tie this in olive. Um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tie in a bit of uh, olive calf tail. Um, I'm going to put that in right over the top of the hook, uh, right in the back, and not a heck of a lot of this stuff, but pluck all the fluff out of it, kind of measure it. I'm going not too far back behind the hook here and I'm going to trim it. And get it tied down on top of the hook. And you can see it goes back maybe half the half the hook length. Next thing is some olive uh, crystal flash. I've got a couple of strands which I'm going to divide. So now I've got four strands and I'm going to tie that in on either side of the calf tail four strands on your side, four strands on mine that are folded across here. Give it a little bit of flash. The next step, I'm going to move forward just a little bit and I'm going to tie in a 532nd lead eye. This happens to be a presentation eye, but a regular 532nd lead eye would be fine. Uh, a couple of wraps one direction, a couple of wraps the other direction. I'm going to bring it back again. Uh, time for a little bit of my Dave's Flex Mint. Got to get glue in on this, make sure that it stays together. A little dab on my lead eye and a little in the back. Um, now, this is an olive uh, estes. I'm going to tie that in, clear it back. And then we're going to bring in some magnum sized olive rabbit fur. Now I'm going to put a V in the back on either side uh, so it V's out toward you and toward me. I'm going to move forward just a little bit and I'm going to tie this in right behind the lead eyes. get it square so it's this is a rabbit fur facing outward leather 
facing inward. And I'm going to cut that with a razor blade, not your scissors, just a little longer than my calf tail. Now I'm going to do it on your side. It's not laying in there right. Okay, now we got it under control. I'm going to put a few tight wraps on it. And I'm going to move all the way to the front of the hook with my thread. And again, I'm going to cut this rabbit strip with my razor blade try to match it up so it's about the same length. Okay. Now you get the idea. Got a little on both sides. Okay. I'm going to kind of, well, first of all, again, a little glue might hurt, never hurt. Lay in that leather so everything is glued in tight. Now, I'm going to kind of backstroke this a little bit. I'm going to put one wrap of this Estes behind. Okay, I'm going to come forward. I'm going to go back behind. And under. And I'm going to come forward again. So I've got a little bit across both sides of this rabbit strip. It's going to help kind of puff it out so it stays out. Okay. Now I'm going to X over my lead eyes. I go across and toward you. I go behind the lead eyes and around. And then I come underneath the hook and I cross over the opposite direction. Okay. Now, try to keep your estes out as you're palmering this forward down the shank of the hook. And capture. Get a good look at the fly and sideways there. And I'm going to put some nice tight wraps around that Estes. Okay. Now I'm going to bring in a piece of mason. This is a mason, or hard mason. Um, you know, a lot of guys use 20, 25, 30 pound test for making weed guards. I think that's a little much. Um, I, I think it has a tendency to become a fish guard. So I tend to use 16. That's about as high as I ever go. Um, when cutting wire or monofilament, I use a pair of gate shears. I don't want to wreck my good scissors. Um, these do a really nice job of clipping it. Um, the other thing that's important is I've got it folded across now and I'm going to give it a pinch with my pliers and if you can find a pair of smooth jaw pliers all you have to do is just give it a little bit of a squeeze 
and it'll put a dimple in the monofilament so it, so it bends nicely. I'm going to do a, you know, a double guard up like this around the hook. Now, there's a lot of different ways of tying in mono for a weed guard, but the way I'm going to do it today is I'm going to V the monofilament in on the underside of the hook. As you can see, I've got hook point up now. Um, and I'm going to put a couple of wraps. Now this isn't so much to hold or tie down the monofilament as to just capture it on the underside. Now that I've got it down there, I'm going to take the two tips and I'm going to push them through the eye of the hook. if I can get it through. Okay. We got her through. Okay, I'm going to put a few tight wraps to hold the, the wheat guard in place. And then I'm going to fold it back and I'm going to put some more behind it. Give it a good thread base. Kind of pull it apart. And bring some more in. Trying to get that monofilament to stand up pretty straight. Okay, it looks like we're there. I'm going to whip finish this real quick. I'll just put a couple of hitches in because I'm going to follow this up with some UV epoxy. Okay, get them in that final position that you want. And I'm going to put a little bit of the UV on both sides. Give it a shot of light. Okay, now we've got to trim the monofilament that we tied in. We're going to come down to the hook. that is the Batman. I'm going to show a couple of pictures of some that were tied the other way near the end of the video here. Okay, there you go.